Hey, what is going on guys? Today we are going to be setting up a virtual machine to host a web server. Um, it should be a pretty fun project here, pretty fun quick little project. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I can't show, there's a lot of stuff I'm not going to be able to show in this video, but um, I will be able to show the process of creating a virtual machine uh, using uh, VirtualBox, which uh, will be a very fun um, and should be honestly very easy to do as well. So it looks like VirtualBox just crashed here, so we're going to reopen this, and we're going to go to Tools up here. Um, and we're gonna click the new button um, right there. Okay, uh, for this virtual machine, we're gonna type um, web server. You can name this whatever you want to, but this is literally uh, the basics for creating a web server um, virtual machine that will literally just run a web server. So I'm gonna do Linux, Ubuntu, 64-bit, uh, all of that looks great. Um, for memory, I'm gonna do 2048. Uh, it's about two gigs of RAM, I think. Uh, we're gonna create. Uh, VDI VirtualBox disk image uh, dynamically allowed. That is correct. Uh, we're gonna do. Let's just do 25. Sometimes web servers take a little bit more storage. Uh, we're gonna go to this PC. We're gonna go to, go to our drive here and just save that there. And we're going to create. Uh, I'm going very quickly through this because you don't need to go super fast or super slow through it. Um, so we're gonna do internal network here. Let's just do internal network, and we're gonna do uh, Eugene's Wi-Fi. Long story. Um, we're gonna push. Okay, actually, before we do that, let's go back in here. We're gonna go to system. We're gonna go to acceleration. We're gonna do Hyper-V. We're gonna go to processor. We're gonna bump this up to two cores. Uh, everything looks good there. Display that looks fine. Uh, Ubuntu doesn't need too much. So as you can see, literally within a couple of minutes here, we have all of the settings that we need to. Oh, looks like it did not transfer that over. So as you can see, it's wanting you to select a hard disk here, uh, which is the ISO file. So we're going to click um, Ubuntu 20.04. Um, it's about three gigs. As you can see, it's booting into Oracle VirtualBox right here. Um, exactly what we want. Um, and yeah. So as you can see, we are already um, literally booting into Ubuntu with this recording being less than three minutes. Um, if you wanted to, you can do Control C right here. Um, as long as you download a fresh disk image, you really don't need to do file system checks, but normally this is pretty quick anyways. Uh, so this computer has two cores, two processing cores, and two gigs of RAM, so it will be plenty for a uh, virtual machine that literally just hosts a web server. Um, and this is just temporary for me, so um, I'm just going to be hosting this server for only a couple of weeks here, maybe a month at the most. Um, so yeah, as you can see, we're booting into Ubuntu. Uh, I'm using 24.04 LTS. I like the long-term support. Seems like you get a lot more um, benefits through that as well. Um, I don't know if you heard that in the background, but that was Ubuntu making its sounds. Um, so we're going to click Install Ubuntu. Um, I'm not going to go through the entire installation process of Ubuntu, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I'm going to do the minimal installation, and we're going to install third-party software for graphics. And you want to do this, download updates while installing Ubuntu. Um, that will start caching the new software updates available. Um, sometimes when you download a disk image, it's not fully up to date, so um, this will solve that for you. As you can see, it's taking a second to load here, which is totally normal. Um, uh, you want the screen too. We're going to erase disk and install Ubuntu. If you're not seeing this, um, make sure you have a virtual hard drive created. Um, we're going to click continue. All of that looks right. Um, typically, if you're doing this through VirtualBox, it's very simple anyway, and you really won't need to check most of the settings. Um, as you can see, it thinks we're in Toronto because of the VPN, which is great, so we're going to continue with that. Uh, for the name, I'm going to do server, and it's going to be server, I'm going to do web server virtual, virtual box, like that. Uh, the username is going to be admin, and the password is going to be a password. Uh, we're going to click login automatically, but if this is a computer that others are going to be using, I would do require my password to log in. All of that stuff looks great, though. Oh, it's reserved. Yeah, okay, fine. Let's do... All right, let's do this instead. I'm going to do user, and then the username is going to be server. Let's continue with this. Um, it's, um, as you start the installation process, it will start to uh, copy copy files over from the ISO so it will speed it up a lot so if it takes you a little bit of time to set that up um, it won't be too bad for this step of the process but literally once we finish this 
we would have already set up a virtual machine uh, running 20.04 LTS. I believe they have 21.04, um, but I have not downloaded an ISO for that yet. Um, if you wanted to do like a Kali Linux virtual machine, you could also do that as well um, with the same installation process. You would just do uh, Ubuntu 64-bit depending on uh, the ISO you downloaded from Kali's site, but really super simple process here. As you can see, it's almost finished copying files over and will be um, about done with this process. All right, so as you can see here, it says installation is complete and you need to reboot. So I'm going to let this reboot here. Um, and you're gonna push enter. And uh, if you're using VirtualBox, it will automatically um, remove the ISO file when it reboots. Um, also, if you do not know how to install VirtualBox, there's tons of guides on the internet. I'm not gonna go over that in this video, it's very simple. Um, as you can obviously tell, I'm using Windows for my host computer, so um, it's really not hard to get VirtualBox for Windows. Uh, you kind of do need a powerful computer if you're doing multiple VMs like I am. I think I have three or four running right now, um, but I also have like 32 gigs of RAM, so um, yeah, you have to be a little cautious with that. You have to have enough performance for everything. And we're going to skip this um, live patch, we're going to skip as well. We're not going to send system info unless you want to. Location services are going to be off. And we are going to push done. Um, as you can see, the screen's pretty small, so if you want to, you can make it a little bigger. You can go in here, get to settings, go down to display. Normally it says display, not screen display. Um, and then you can just find something with the same aspect ratio, as you can see here. Looks like it went to the other monitor. Um, I'm going to keep the changes, because um, that all looks fine. Alright, so, actually that's a, still a little big. Let's do something a little bit smaller. Alright, um, so, yeah, here we go. We're in Ubuntu. A few things I like to do. First of all, we're going to make that dock smaller. We're going to go to dark mode. Uh, we're going to open Firefox. We're going to go to... Let me remind that later. Um, in Firefox, we're going to go here, we're going to go to uh, apachifriends.org slash index.html. Don't really need to do index.html. Uh, we're going to click download. Um, it's going to take you to this download page. And as you can see, it says xamp linux x64. We're going to save the file. Um, that's going to start downloading. We're going to go here. Sorry for the very fast paced tutorial. It's pretty simple. Done this a couple times. Um, now we're going to go to CD Downloads, wow. Alright, and we're going to do LS, then we're going to do chmod755, xamp, you can start typing xamp and push uh, tab. Um, and then next what we're going to do is we're going to do we're gonna launch the setup wizard. So if we do LS, as you can see it's there, but um, we're going to make that an executable. That's what we did with the chmod755, that basically makes it... Um, set the permissions right so it can be executable by the system. So we're going to do sudo dot slash xamp. We're going to push tab there. Um, we're going to enter our password. We're going to push enter. So what this is doing is this is starting the script for the uh, Apache or xamp, whatever this is. Yeah, it's xamp. It's going to start the thing for that. We're just going to let that do its thing. We're just going to push next through all of these. Uh, we're going to do next again, and it's going to start installing. There we go. That was a pretty simple installation process. Now we're going to go here. We're going to go to private internet access for Ubuntu. Um, as you can see, it does not like my VPN that it's already on. Uh, chimneys, let's do that. All right, we're going to go here. Uh, normally, the second link for this is great. If you don't have private internet access, you can port forward this through your router. But in my case, I'm going to use private internet access so I can port forward that way. Um, it's a lot better to do a VPN on here than I can port forward through there. So as you can see, it's downloading that. We're going to save the file. And as soon as this downloads, we'll be able to, to X out of Firefox. All right, so let's go back into our terminal. We're going to open a new window, right-click new window. CD downloads once more, so this is changing the directory to downloads. Now we're going to do SHPIA Linux. Sometimes it doesn't let you do tab, depends on the command you're trying to run. 69393.run. Oh, can't open. Okay, so as you can see, I typed something wrong there, so we're just going to copy this. We're going to do SH, then we're going to do paste, then it will um, start the process of installing private internet access access 
And as you can see, it's adding all of the um, interfaces. And if we do this, oops, I'm going to do IP ADDR, oops, R. Um, as you can see, it added, um, well, it didn't add it yet. It will add it once you sign in. Um, we're going to do dark theme, next, next. We're going to log in. All right, and then we're going to sign in with our username. All right, so as we, as you can see here, we just signed in. Uh, we're gonna do CA Ontario. We're gonna go to settings up here. Uh, we're gonna go to launch on system startup, connect on launch, and we're gonna go to network here. Request port forwarding. We're gonna go to WireGuard, um, and let all of that be the same. We're going to connect to CA Ontario. Um, as you can see, we already have a VPN IP, but we're VPNing from a VPN. That's like VPNception. Um, but as you can see, 66.115.145.236 is now the uh, IP, like the public IP of this virtual machine. Um, and so once we set up XAMP, we'll be able to um, then connect to that from there. Also, if you're curious, the reason we connected to Canada, Ontario um, is because that's um, the closest to my location that you can port forward. Um, in the United States, uh, private internet access does not currently support port forwarding. So you have to connect to Canada, then you can do the port forwarding that way. Um, it's a completely doable workaround, obviously, since it's a VPN anyway. So you're changing your network to a different location. Okay, so as you can see, it says it's completing the wizard. Uh, we're going to click launch here, uh, and it's going to open XAMPP. We're going to go to managed servers. Once it checks that, Alright, so as you can see, Apache web server is already running. We're going to go to configure. We're going to change the port to whatever private internet access says. Uh, so we're going to do 31580. Um, and then we're going to, yes, restart. Uh, open a new terminal window and do sudo ufw status. Um, make sure it says inactive. Um, that's the firewall. Technically, you don't really need that. Uh, you just want to make sure that's off so that way uh, your computer allows. Um, access through that port on the VPN. All right, so as you can see, we have another Chrome window here, and if I were to go to the IP of this, hang on, there we go. That two three six, and we're gonna go to port three one five eight zero. As you can see, it's taking us to the XAMPP dashboard, so we can see that that is working correctly. Um, if you need to go to the directory of this, you can just go to the folder, other locations, computer, um, and then opt, and then lamp, and then uh, htdocs. Then that's where you can put your HTML files for your XAMPP. Um, and then also another thing with XAMPP too is to start the control panel. Um, you Normally it doesn't show up in the applications. Sometimes there's a bug where it does not. Um, which as you can see it does not show up. Okay, so basically if your XAMPP is closed, so let's say I stop all and then I close XAMPP, um, as you can see I don't have XAMPP, XAMP. I can't search it um, in the control panel. Um, what pulled up in that suggestion, by the way, was just the uh, downloaded file for it. So in your terminal window, um, you do sudo slash opt slash lamp slash manager dash Linux, um, and then we're gonna do dash x64 dot run. And what this will do is this will open the control panel for you to go to manage servers and then start your server, um, and that can do that. So yes, very simple process here to set up XAMPP and set up a virtual machine. Um, and that was from the complete start. We created a virtual machine that runs XAMPP, um, and it's on a VPN, so we have a fully fledged working um, web server. So if you were to run this through like a proxy or something through Engin Nginx. Um, you can easily do that and Nginx can forward to the VPN IP so you don't have to worry about um, telling people to go to a certain port when they go to your website they can just go to um, your domain and then it will automatically forward through Nginx which that will be a completely separate video if you're interested in that let me know thank you for watching this video I really hope you enjoyed it have a great day and we'll see you in the next one peace